Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. The Earth formed roughly four and a half billion years ago, and not long after that, something strange and mysterious happened. Life sprang up like a wildfire. It wasn't the gradual process one might imagine. It seemed to happen all of a sudden, out of the blue. As soon as the Earth's surface cooled down from molten rock, the first organism somehow emerged out of nowhere. Life just seemed to switch on. It was very simple at first. DNA and RNA, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. These are the blueprints or the basic building blocks of what's alive. Think of RNA and DNA as the source code program guiding the physical development of all the organisms we observe today, from humans to shrimp to viruses. There is a theory out there called the genes first hypothesis, with the idea that the first life forms were just these simple chemical blueprints, self-replicating nucleic acids like RNA and DNA. In other words, the building blocks themselves were alive and that the organism's physical parts were just a later add-on to this basic physical system. The leading belief among scientists is the natural process of evolution drove the combinations of these genetic building blocks into fitter and fitter organisms over eons of time. So if science knows that the building blocks essentially assembled themselves through natural selection, there's still an open question. Who or what built these building blocks? Where did the nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA come from? Organisms to DNA to nucleotides. Just like Legos with studs and slots to fit together, these nucleotides assemble together into strands and helices, just like the double helix of DNA. It's magic how just a few molecules can assemble into countless different and diverse combinations. Nucleotides are somewhat complex themselves, composed of three subunit molecules, a nucleobase, a five carbon sugar, and a phosphate chemical group. The four nucleobases in DNA are guanine, adenine, cytosine, and thymine. In RNA, uracil is used in place of thymine. The order or sequence of these bases determines the biological instructions that are contained in a strand of DNA. One sequence of nucleotides in one strand of DNA codes for a certain protein in the hair of an aardvark, while another similar strand with a slightly different pattern will give you the wax on a thorn from a Venus flytrap. All life on Earth is based on just 20 amino acids. It's a well-known story in biology. So many billions of combinations from just a few building blocks, all guided by the force of natural selection. That part of the story has been fairly well explored. There's another part, however, that's murkier and not as well understood. These nucleic acid building blocks, the precursors to complex life, don't have a clear origin. Science isn't sure where they came from. They're somewhat complex molecules, and they seem to fit together so perfectly. And life seemed to start with its own Big Bang. So what happened? The prevailing theory is that lightning struck mineral-rich waters on volatile early Earth, and the electrical energy from the strikes turned those minerals into the building blocks of life. Scientists refer to this as the primordial soup. The wide acceptance of this theory is due in large part to the famous Miller-Urey experiment. In 1952, a graduate student named Stanley Miller, just 22 years old, designed an experiment to test whether the amino acids that form proteins could be created under the conditions thought to exist on primordial Earth. He and his thesis advisor simulated the conditions of early Earth by sealing water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen in a five-liter glass flask. Then they applied electrical sparks to the mixture to simulate lightning. What they observed seemed miraculous. Amid the roiling liquid, lumps of amino acids appeared in the flask. After a day, the solution in the flask had turned pink in color, and after a week of continuous operation, the solution was deep red. Miller identified five amino acids present in the solution, glycine, alpha-alanine, and beta-alanine, aspartic acid, and alpha-aminobutyric acid. 
This influential experiment showed that with just water, ammonia, hydrogen, and methane, and electrical sparks to simulate lightning, you could form several of the protein precursors necessary for all life on Earth. There has been a fair amount of debate and controversy about these results over the years. For a while, there were issues with some laboratories showing success using the experimental conditions, while other labs couldn't replicate the formation of the amino acids. The explanation for this is fascinating. It turned out that the experiment's container played an underappreciated role in the experiment. Studies that utilize glass reaction vessels seem to achieve positive results, while plastic and metal yielded nothing. Researchers discovered that the glass surface of the reaction vessel acted like a reactant itself, helping with the formation of the amino acids. Other debates surrounded the makeup of the gases in the atmosphere of early primordial Earth. Originally, it was thought that the primitive atmosphere contained mostly ammonia and methane. However, some scientists argue most of the atmospheric carbon at the time was CO2, not methane. In November of 2020, a team of international scientists reported their study on oxidation of the magma from about 4.5 billion years ago. The data suggested that the original atmosphere of the Earth contained very little oxygen and no methane or ammonia, as presumed in the Miller-Urey experiment. CO2 was likely the most abundant component. Another problem with the primordial soup theory is how amino acids spontaneously came together to form peptides and proteins. Normally in nature, these more complex molecules would be unlikely to form at all and likely to break apart very quickly in the environment. John Desmond Bernal suggested clay mineral surfaces could have acted like a mating ground a place for different amino acids to come together and link up in the formation of life, or abiogenesis. Efforts to replicate this have met with mixed to disappointing results. One of the wilder theories, but one that is gaining acceptance, is that there could be an extraterrestrial source. The obvious first thought is that some star people seeded the Earth with nucleic acid building blocks as soon as the conditions were right. Then they just sat back and watched their little petri dish. There could be another, perhaps more plausible, space theory. Conditions similar to those of the Miller-Urey experiment are present in other regions of our own solar system. The Murchison meteorite that fell near Australia in 1969 was found to contain several different amino acid types. Comets are thought to contain large amounts of complex carbon compounds, such as formanide, ethylene glycol, and ethanol. That's right, drinking alcohol frozen in a comet. The early Earth was just peppered by comets, possibly providing a large supply of organic molecules along with water. This has been cited to infer an origin of life outside of Earth, the so-called panspermia hypothesis. While there's been significant progress made toward understanding the origin of life since Miller's experiment, still no conclusion is certain. It seems that every step forward is met with a new mystery. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.